you know, that the body wasn't really dead, it was just in some kind of soul sleep. It's not why he said that. He said, Lazarus is sleeping because to Christ, in his eternal na character and nature, this was but a pause in Lazarus' life. He knew exactly what he was going to do. This was not, this was only temporary. This was only a four day death for Lazarus. And Jesus knows that. And so he says, Lazarus is sleeping. Of course, they misunderstand and they say, well, when you're sick and you sleep, it's good. So he just says, Lazarus is dead. <laughs> Let me explain it for you a little clearer, he says. Lazarus is dead. And he adds this onto, and I'm glad that he's dead. Now, it doesn't really sound like Jesus is much friends with Lazarus. I mean, if you have somebody who tells you, I'm glad you're going to die, you might not consider them your closest ally. In fact, you might sleep with one eye open when you're around them. Here's Jesus saying, I'm glad. Well, why is he glad? To the intent ye may believe. I'm glad because the events that I'm about to do are going to so demonstrate the power of God that your faith is going to be rattled by what I'm going to do. And only in raising him from the dead is it going to rattle you to the core that you might believe. So Thomas, completely misunderstanding once again, which is funny, his name is Didymus. You know what that's short for? Uh, in the Greek, ditto. Thomas ditto. Uh, they said maybe it was because he's a twin. I think maybe it's because he repeated what Jesus said. I don't know. <laughs> Thomas, he turns and he says, all right, men, let's go and we're going to die with Jesus. Jesus had just told them that he could walk in the daylight. It's okay, I'm not going to die. Well, this is kind of the life Jesus had anyways, right? Oh, ye of little faith. So he goes to Jerusalem, and about two miles away is Bethany. According to tradition and ritual and what was supposed to be done with requirements, there were hired mourners who had mourned for the death of people. Hired mourners. They would be hired men and women to come and to mourn, so you'd have family and friends as well as these hired mourners, and it was a demonstration of your wealth the more hired mourners you had. So if you had a lot of mourners, it means you were a wealthy, influential person because you had a lot of money to hire at your death, or your family did. Whoever was come to comfort them, it appears to be a large group of people. It would, not, it would make sense that Mary, Martha, and Lazarus were somewhat wealthy, somewhat well-off, since they were able to host Jesus and disciples very often. Either way you look at it, you've got a whole bunch of people who are gathered together mourning the death of Jesus and Mary in her home, Martha coming out to meet Jesus. Martha shows faith. She shows an intense understanding that God, Jesus is God and the Messiah. But I find her faith only goes so far. She's a lot like us. <laughs> Sister Mary's the same way. Because they say the same thing. They say, the first thing they say is, Master, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And of course, Mary, when she comes out to see you, says the exact same thing, right? Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. In thinking about what it means to live in this world today. How often do we live with that motto of life? If only this would have happened. If only God, you would have just stepped in, I would not have gone through this grief. Trust in God rests upon his character, his person. And we can count it joy when we go through diverse trials, temptations, because we trust his character. We trust who he is not based upon our circumstances, but based upon who he is. So she says, Lord, if you had been here, my brother had not died. But she shows this little bit of faith when she says, but I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. So she says, I understand God can do whatever you, whatever you want him to do. He's your father. So Jesus tells her. He plainly tells her, your brother's going to rise again. But still, her faith is veiled. It's dark. She says, I know he's going to rise again in the end times. You see, she has a faith, doesn't she? She has an eternal view. You see, this is the amazing part about the words, I am the resurrection and life. Martha speaks of the future. My brother will rise again. Jesus answers, I am the resurrection and the life. 
Jesus deals in the present. He is this. What a tremendous statement. I am the resurrection and the life. With amazing clarity, Jesus explains his purpose and his existence. This opportunity, Lazarus died so that Jesus could explain his purpose and his character to Martha and to those thousands of people who read John eleven twenty five. 25. Perfect clarity. Of course, we know the rest of the story. I read it. Jesus continues on. Mary comes to see him. She says the same thing. If you'd been here, my brother would not have died. And then he's taken. He says, take me to where you've laid him. They take him to where they've laid him. And Jesus, is, the Bible says, groans and is troubled. What that literally means is that his spirit began to boil. Not out of anger, but just this turbulence. He's troubled inside. What is he troubled inside about? The events surrounding what troubles him tells us.